Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to continue with the next presentation. In this lecture, I'm going to highlight the key features of monkeypox and how to differentiate monkeypox from other infections like chickenpox, handful of mouth disease, and measles. So uh, first, let's take a look at monkeypox. The clinical manifestation of monkeypox can be divided into four phases, namely incubation period, followed by febrile stage, rash stage, and recovery phase. So incubation period or the interval from infection to onset of symptoms is usually 6 to 13 days, but can range from 5 to 21 days. And during this stage, the patient is typically asymptomatic. This is then followed by the febrile stage or invasion phase or prodromal period. And during this stage, the patient will present with fever and typically high-grade fever, 38.5 to 40.5 degrees Celsius. And it will be associated with other symptoms, in particular, lymph adenopathy, which can be localized or generalized lymph adenopathy. And apart from that, the patient can have headache, chills, sore throat, malaise, or fatigue. And this febrile stage will usually last for one to four days. So following this, the patient will enter rash stage. Within one to three days after the onset of fever, the rash of various sizes will appear first on the face and then spread to the arms and leg and finally, uh, and then hand and feet that include the pumps and so. And finally, it will go to all parts of the body. And in monkey pox, the rash typically concentrated on the face, palms and so and feet more than the body or what we call centrifugal distribution. And this is a very important feature of monkeypox that can be used to differentiate from chickenpox. In chickenpox, the rash is typically distributed more on the trunk than the limbs or what we call centripetal distribution. And the rash in monkeypox will undergo several stages of evolution from macules, which is flat lesion, to papules, raised lesion, to vesicles, a fluid field blisters, and then pustules, pus field blisters. And this is then followed by resolution of the rash over time with crust and scabs formation and eventually drop off on healing. The whole evolution will take around two to four weeks of period. And the skin lesion in monkeypox is often a one-stage disease or what we call monomorphic condition, which means the rash will go through the same evolution at the same time. And when you examine the patient at any point in time, the, same, the rash will look similar. And this, again, another important feature that you can use to differentiate from chickenpox. Chickenpox typically is a more polymorphic disorder in which at any point in time when you examine the patient, there will be multiple different morphologies seen. And this can be one important differentiating features between monkeypox and chickenpox. And this diagram shows the evolution of skin lesions seen in monkeypox from macules to papules to vesicles to pustules, which typically umbilicated shape on an erythematous base. And these pustules eventually dries up and form a crust or scabs, which will uh, heal at the center and form an umbilicated crust. And this crust eventually on healing, it will fall off. And this is another diagram showing the change of morphology seen in monkeypox. The rash in monkeypox can be associated with pain or pruritus, and it may involve with the lesion in the oral mucous membrane, genitalia, conjunctiva, or even cornea. And these are some of the photos of monkeypox patients. As you can see here, there are multiple deep umbilicated vesicles, pustular lesion seen on the body and face. Another close view of the deep papules and pustules on the face. And you can take a note here, the lesion have monomorphic, that means it has similar morphology. Similarly, uh, this is another photo showing generalized papillopustular lesion, mainly distributed on the face, hand, and feet as compared to the trunk. As you can see here, the trunk is relatively spare and less lesion. Another photo showing the similar distribution, mainly on the face, then the body, 
or what we call centrifugal distribution. And this is another photo showing the papilla pustula lesion, mainly on the hand and feet as compared to the body. And the skin lesion in monkeypox eventually heals and scab will fall off during recovery phase. And the infectivity period of monkeypox ranges from one day before symptoms onset up to 21 days after the initial symptoms has appeared. And a person is no longer contagious once all the scabs has, have fallen off and there's intact skin underneath. Monkeypox is usually a self-limiting disease with symptoms lasting for two to four weeks. However, complication can happen, especially in immunocompromised group or in very young children or elderly group. And this includes secondary skin infections such as abscess, ulcers, bronchopneumonia, sepsis, ankylitis, and infection of cornea eventually leads to loss of vision. And there is a list of differential diagnoses that can mimic monkeypox. And this includes chickenpox, hand, foot and mouth disease, measles, bacterial skin infections, scabies, syphilis, and drug in, uh, reaction. And I'm going to share with you the important differential diagnosis, especially on chickenpox, hand, foot and mouth disease, and measles, and how we differentiate this condition from monkeypox. First, let's take a look on chickenpox or varicella zoster. So chickenpox is caused by varicella zoster virus, which is a human herpes virus. And 90% of chickenpox occur in children less than 10 years old. And it is highly contagious. And the patient is infectious for one to two days before the exanthem or the rash appear until the last groups of vesicles has clustered. And the transmission is mainly by airborne droplets, but may also spread by direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. And the mean incubation period for chickenpox is 10 to 21 days, quite similar to monkeypox. And the problem of uh, chickenpox include fever, chills, malaise, headache, anorexia, severe back pain, sore throat, and dry cough. And it usually lasts for, uh, for two to three days before the onset of rash. And the rash of chickenpox typically begin on face and scalp and then spread to the trunk and finally comes to the extremities. And the rash in chickenpox is more concentrated on the body than the limbs. And this is what we call centripetal distribution. And this is, another, this is an important feature to differentiate from monkeypox as what I've mentioned to you just now. And again, in varicella zoster or chickenpox, the rash will undergo morphological change. And initially, the rash will present with rose-colored macules, and then it evolves and form papules, and then vesicles, pustules, and crusts, something quite similar to monkeypox. However, in chickenpox, the lesion typically appear in crops. And each group will go through the morphological evolution change. And hence, at any point in time, when you examine the patient, there will be simultaneous presence of lesion of all stages of development. And this is what we call polymorphous condition as compared to monomorphous condition in monkeypox. In chickenpox, mucous membrane such as mouth genitalia can be involved as well. And this is the morphological change seen in chickenpox. It begins with rose-colored macules and then papules, then vesicles. In chickenpox, the vesicles is typically very superficial and surrounded by an irregular area of erythema. And this is sometimes we describe as dew drops on a rose petal. And this is very, quite different from monkeypox, which is usually larger and deeper. And from vesicles, it will transform into pastilles and it then evolve into crust. And then the crust will fall off and it will leave shallow pink depression that gradually disappear. Scarring is very rarely seen in chickenpox unless the lesion was superimposed with secondary bacterial infection. And this is some of the photos of patients with chickenpox on the face 
and on the trunk. As you can see here, the lesion is mainly distributed on the trunk as compared to the limb, which is relatively spat and less severe. And close view of the chicken box, as you can see here, when you examine the lesion closely, there are multiple different morphology of the lesion. As you can see here, there are vesicles, pustules, and there are some drying lesion, and there are some very early macules and papules. And close view of the vesicles seen in chicken pox, or what we describe as dew drops on a rose paddle, which indicate a very superficial vesicles. Another close view of the chicken pox, which is mainly distributed on the trunk, as you can see here, they, they are polymorphous condition, many different morphology as you can see in the photo here. Another close view, as you can see here, there are pustules, vesicles, and drying lesion with a scab formation at the center, and early lesion, macule and papules. And this is one of the pathognomonic seen in chickenpox. And this can be used as one important differentiating features uh, to differentiate from monkeypox. And this table summarizes the important differentiating features between monkeypox and chickenpox. And the most important features is probably number one, lymph adenopathy, which is seen in monkeypox, but not in chickenpox. And second is a pump and sole involvement, which is seen in monkeypox, but very rarely seen in chickenpox. And the third is distribution. Monkeypox is mainly distributed on the limbs and the face rather than the body or what we call centrifugal distribution. And chicken box will be opposite centripedal dis uh, distribution with more concentration on the trunk than the limbs. And then the lesion seen in monkey box is usually hard and deep seated, well circumscribed and umbilicated. However, in varicella zoster or chicken box, the lesion is more superficial and the vesicles typically described as dew drops on the rose paddle. And in monkeypox, the lesion is monomorphous, whereas in chickenpox, the lesion is polymorphous with multiple morphology when you look, when you look at the lesion closely. Now, I would like to move on to the second condition that can present with vesicles that can mimic uh, monkeypox, that is hand, foot and mouth disease. So hand, foot and mouth disease is caused by Picona virus, in particular, Kosaki virus A16 and Enterovirus 71. However, other serotype of virus has been identified as the cause of hand, foot and mouth disease. And these include Kosaki A5, 6, 7, 9, 10, B2, 3, 4, 5, and C1. These serotypes would depend on the region of the outbreak. And the age of onset for hand, foot, and mouth disease is typically less than 10 years old. However, it can also occur in young and middle-aged adults. Hand, foot, and mouth disease is highly contagious. It can spread from one person to another person by oral to oral and fecal to oral routes via air droplets or contact with the infectious material. And one third of patients with hand, foot, and mouth disease remain asymptomatic and symptomatic patients are mainly children less than five years old. And it has incubation period of three to six days, which is much shorter than monkeypox and chickenpox. And again, it begins with prodromal symptoms, such as low-grade fever that lasts for two to three days. And it can associate with anorexia, malaise, abdominal pain, and cough. And hand, foot, and mouth disease will begin with oral lesion and also skin rash. In terms of oral lesion, it can, it can start with macular lesion that appear typically on the buccal mucosa and also tongue and heart palate. And the mucosa lesion will rapidly progress to vesicles and then erode and become surrounded by an erythematous halo. And at the same time, the patient can present with skin rash which typically begin with macules and then papules, and then quickly evolve into vesicles on an erythematous base. However, these lesions are usually very tiny, ranges between two to eight millimeters. 
And the vesicle seen in hand, foot, and mouth disease is typically elongated or elliptical in shape following the skin creases. And it is painful and usually do not rupture. And the site of involvement is again localized mainly to the hand, sole, buttock, and genitalia. And this is a close view of the oral vesicles or erosion seen in the mucosa area in hand patient with hand, foot, and mouth disease. And another photo showing the vesicles on the hand and feet and in the mouth. As you can see here, the vesicle in hand, foot, and mouth disease is typically elliptical in shape, surrounded by erythematous halo. And it is, it is uh, following the uh, uh, long axis uh, of the uh, skin creases. And chicken pop, uh, sorry, hand foot and mouth disease can also involve genital area and also uh, uh, buttock region. And sometimes th this can be misdiagnosed as uh, uh, scabies. In hand foot and mouth disease, it should be noted that the exanthem is not always present at all sites of predilection. And this is sometimes known as incomplete form of hand foot and mouth disease. And the clearance of hand, foot, and mouth disease will be expected after 5 to 10 days. And fever usually subsides within 48 hours, and the cutaneous and mucosal lesion will disappear in no more than 7 to 10 days. And this table summarizes the differentiating features between monkeypox and hand, foot, and mouth disease. First is lymph adenopathy, which is seen in monkeypox, but not in hand, foot, and mouth disease. Secondly, Oral ulcer, which is commonly seen in hand foot and mouth disease, but not in monkeypox. And third is lesion appearance. In monkeypox, the blister is hard and deep, umbilicated, well circumscribed, but in hand foot and mouth disease, it's usually small vesicles ranging, ranging from 2 to 8 millimeter on the erythematous space. And in monkeypox, the lesion is generalized with centrifugal distribution mainly on the limbs than the trunk. However, in hand foot and mouth disease, the lesion is localized to the hand, feet, buttocks, and genitalia. Now, I would like to move on to the fourth condition, which can also mimic hand foot, uh, 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 which can also mimic monkeypox. That is measles, or also known as rubiola. So measles is a highly infectious childhood viral uh, infection it is caused by measles virus, which is a form of paramyxoviridae uh, virus. And transmission is mainly by respiratory droplets via sneezing and coughing. An infected person can remain contagious several days before onset of rash up to five days after the lesion has appeared. In measles, the incubation period is around 10 to 15 days. And this is then followed by prodromal period and typically, the patient will present with fever lasting for two to four days, followed by the four C, which include cough, coryza, conjunctivitis, and also complex spots. So the rash seen in uh, measles is typically erythematous macules and papules that appear on day four of febrile illness. And the lesion is non-vesicular. And this can be a very important clue to differentiate measles from other vascular conditions like monkeypox, chickenpox, and hand, foot, and mouth disease. And the rash seen in measles typically appear on the forehead at the hairline and also behind the ears and then spread inferiorly to the face, trunk, extremities, palm, and so, and reach the feet by day three of the lesion. And then the lesion will fade in order with residual yellow tan stain of faint disquamation. That means when it resolves, it will leave some pigmentation on the skin. And the measles rash will resolve within four to six days. And apart from that, as I mentioned, complete spot is a, tip, is a pathognomonic lesion seen during prodromal period. And this is a lesion seen around two days before the rash appear. And it is characterized as cluster white lesion on the buccal mucosa. And it is quite pathognomonic for measles. And sometimes complex spots is described as grain of salt on wet background. 
and this complete spot will fade off as the rash appear. And this is another close view of complete spots seen in measles patient. Eh? And this is a rash seen in measles. As you can see here, this is non-vesicular lesion. And this table summarizes the main differentiating features between monkeypox, chickenpox, and measles. And the most important features is a rash appearance. Monkeypox and chickenpox are both vesicular lesion, and measles is a non-vesicular lesion. And the rash uh, in measles is rapidly evolving over five to seven days, whereas in monkeypox, it is a slow progressing period taking up to three to four weeks. And the other important thing is complete spot seen in measles during prodromal symptoms, whereas lymph adenopathy is a key important features that can be seen in monkeypox. And mortality rate is uh, up to 11% in monkeypox, but very rare with chickenpox and measles. With that, I would like to thank you for your kind attention.